Nigeria has been rated 169 out of 189 countries in the ranking of ease of doing business, and that's very terrible. Youth unemployment is over 40%. Over the years, over relied on petroleum and uh, now there's a lot of evangelism on, you know, made in Nigerian goods, on um, diversifying the economy. It's an opportunity to see value, identify uh, pain points of the common man, access to affordable health care, access to affordable education without being in the classroom itself, uh, making farmers much more productive and allowing them to move their farm proceeds to the market, leveraging on technology. And these are massive opportunities right there. Because we now see that young people are trying to take charge of their lives and once they innovate, we provide the productive environment for them to be efficient. When they create value and show that the business model works, funding is going to be around the corner. na świecie od zawsze, ale na przestrzeni ostatnich dziesięcioleci bardzo drastycznie wzrosły. 1% ludzi na świecie posiada ponad 40% całego majątku ludzkości. 50% najbiedniejszych, czyli połowa ludzkości, posiada mniej niż 1% tego majątku. Coraz więcej ekonomistów zgadza się, że sam wzrost gospodarczy nie wystarczy, by zniwelować te różnice. Wierzę, że młodzi ludzie, którzy doświadczają tych nierówności, są najlepszymi osobami, by je rozwiązać. We at Passion Incubator providing support for young innovators to keep them focused and be productive. So it's not even just about funding. One has to work in a productive environment. What, what, what creates that productive environment? So a, a workspace. You know, where do we, you know, typically here, we don't have electricity for 24 hours. So and again, imagine if you're working so hard and outage, what happens? You get demoralized, you, you know. So we wanted to create an environment that creates electricity for 24 hours. All that support, like internet access, resources, you know, access to mentors, peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, access to industry experts that allow them to learn more about in the space and where they are trying to build. Sometimes we even place them in established corporations for them to learn. On top of that, we also connect them with corporate, so that allow them to also test their business, the test them, their products, and then all of that is all bundled together uh, as a package be beyond just funding. Kilka lat temu wyjechałem do Indii, by uczyć się jak biznes może zmniejszać właśnie te społeczne nierówności. Dostałem się do Instytutu Kantari, który inkubuje społecznych przedsiębiorców z różnych krajów, a głównie z Afryki i z Azji. Dzięki temu poznałem wyjątkowych młodych ludzi, którzy wdrażają społeczne projekty w swoich społecznościach, które przeciwdziałają globalnym problemom, takim jak ubóstwo, głód, równouprawnienie kobiet, wykluczenie. Prawie nikt nie słyszał o tym, co ci ludzie robią. Uznałem, że trzeba to pokazać i nagłośnić. Dlatego zacząłem ich filmować i produkować o nich filmy. How you doing? Good to see you. It's a long time. Right? How you doing today? Man, it was a long, long time. Yeah. It? Finally, I get the chance to meet you after all this time. Oh, it's three years now. Look at that um, truck. It's it's a mobile clinic that helps bring some level of affordability to. Uh, to healthcare. So is it a way to bridge the gap for people to have access to healthcare, Absolute, which is affordable? Absolutely, and I think you hear more from the doctor. It's a mobile clinic, and uh, we, apart from seeing individual patients, we go to communities, rural communities, to treat people, um, those that cannot afford it. So we source for sponsorship, Brands and all that. What is the price difference between treatment in a regular clinic uh, and your clinic? If in a private clinic, it's about, let's say, procedure is about 15,000. We do it for like 5,000.
most Nigerian families use a kerosene stove. It's quite dangerous, I mean. Over 90,000 Nigerians die from, from indoor air pollution per norm. It's very unacceptable to, to me. And um, luckily, I have a, a product that can solve that. And I'm changing lives of low income earners in Nigeria, but they, they have access to clean energy now. This project for us goes beyond making profit. The retail price of our stove is, is $15 per unit. To be successful as a social entrepreneurship, I think the funding is very key. Without funding, your idea will not come into reality, will not come to reality. You need um, a network of mentors, peer mentoring. Is, is also very key, where you can learn from each other and, um, and motivate each other. If you want to go grow quickly, you need to cut the media. You can just be in your corner doing what you do and nobody knows about you. You need to let the world know what you do. So the power of, um, of PR is key. I remember three years ago when we were conceptualizing our ideas in India. It's now, it's no more an idea. It's um, three years of hard work. Then we have invested in Ribi. It's a peer-to-peer -peer lending in corporate setting. So typically, people will learn from themselves. And then there's always been issues around, um, you know, people lending money to other people and they don't get to pay back. We have um, situations where cooperatives do all their records on sheets of papers and things like that. But this platform, automates all that process from membership management to record keeping and allows a platform for transparency. If there's lack of transparency and people don't know where their money is going into, what investments their, their cooperative executives are using this money for. Now this individual, he has a say as to where he wants his money to be invested in and where he doesn't want his money to be in. And there's no issue of an executive running away with the money. Bank and basically we connect the hospitals to blood banks. We do that through a mobile application. We have a, an SMS service that helps to do the connection as well. And we're also working on a hospital portal so that the hospitals can see in real time the available blood in each blood bank. So to make that work, we actually built a portal for blood banks where they enter the records of blood that they have available. So any request that is sent to us is fetched from that database. And that's because in Nigeria, there are times that you go to a place, you're looking for a particular blood group and you don't get it. So with Red Bank, that connection is made easier. You know the blood bank that has the blood group you're looking for. You get the address and also the phone number so that you can call them and get the available blood that you need. And, and do people have to pay for their blood? Uh, how, how does it work, for example? You can charge 100 naira, both from the SMS or from the mobile application. Then the app we are also building for the hospitals, we intend to also make some revenue from it as well. Okay, this is the response. You, I search for BLD, uh -huh. B positive, just now too, and Suruli. So these are the blood banks that are available on the portal that have the blood. The person who needs blood has uh -huh. three options and can pick from the one that is closest to him. Młodzi ludzie na całym świecie, czy to w Nigerii, w Indiach, czy w Polsce, mają ogromny potencjał. I tylko jeśli ten potencjał zostanie wykorzystany, będziemy w stanie zniwelować różnice, które dotykają nas wszystkich. If you are supporting entrepreneurs, you need to be and show empathy, right? You need to listen to these entrepreneurs. You need to understand exactly what they want. Some of them very young, they have their own personal challenges, right? Some of them have, I mean, they face pressure from their parents who don't want them to be entrepreneurs in the first place. Some of them have families, they need to earn revenue. So being as a leader in the, in, in, or as a supporter of entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, you need to be able to listen to the needs, the personal needs of these guys and you know, offer the kind of support that you think or the, you, you know that they need. 